on this episode of the Naturist Living Show, how to avoid being creepy. This episode of the Naturist Living Show is brought to you by Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park. At Bear Oaks, we offer traditional naturist values in a modern setting. Free your body, free your mind. www.bearoaks.ca Welcome to this latest episode of the Nature's Living Show. My name is Stéphane Deschain. I'm your host for this episode and the owner of Bear Oaks Family Nature's Park. And uh, this episode, if you're following it just as they come out, is happening right at the beginning of the month and actually very close to the last episode on vitamin D. And that's because I was a little bit late and I've been slowly creeping later and later in the month and I wanted to catch up and bring the show back to hopefully the beginning of the month. It's a little difficult sometimes keeping up with my schedule with uh, these recordings and the editing, so my apologies if I'm not as consistent as I'd like to be. As always, this episode of The Naturist Living Show is brought to you 100% close free. So if you're in a place where you can safely do so and you haven't already, please feel free to disrobe and make yourself comfortable. I'm in my favorite state here enjoying a glass of red wine and uh, making as much vitamin D as I can by not wearing any clothing. So um, please feel free to join me. On today's show, we're talking about how not to be creepy. And that's a, it's an interesting topic that uh, I've discussed at length with some of my staff because trying to understand who is creepy and who isn't isn't as obvious as it might seem. Um, of course, it tends to be mostly men. That is the problem of being a single man in naturism is uh, that there are single men who are creepy. Um and creepy means a lot of things and different things to different women. But, um, you know, we just uh, had a problem with a man this weekend at Bear Oaks who uh, was uh, drank too much and then was hitting on lots of people and being quite crude. And and he was a single guy. And, of course, he doesn't help um, to the image for the, the other single men because that never happens with single women that come to Bear Oaks. It only happens with single men. But I know the majority of single men are not like that, which is why... We don't exclude single men. We do try to maintain a gender balance, and I wish we didn't have to do that, but even that is necessary. But among the single men is a great difference, and I've had many discussions with uh, my female staff about why some men are creepy and why some aren't. And the truth is they aren't quite sure. It's a feeling. It's an impression they get. And uh, some of it appears to be because some guys are socially awkward. They're not really comfortable in social situations. They're committing social faux pas and errors. And by the way, it's not just single men, because sometimes the guys who come across as creepy are married or are there with their girlfriend. Yet we have some single guys that all the women like and everybody's comfortable with and nobody has any problems with. Um, but it does certainly seem to be that women have a much greater sense for what they call creepy, a creepy factor, than men do, because men often don't sense the same creepiness as they describe it. And because uh, I've had the discussion, you know, there are some things that describe as creepy are things that I certainly do. I said, you know, I've said to some of them, I said, well, it's not like I haven't noticed that you're attractive. I said, yes, but we know you're not going to do anything about it with us. Whereas others give them the impression that they're not 100% safe, that they're not just being appreciated for being good looking, they're actually being leered at or uh, l lusted after. And uh, that that's part of what can make them uncomfortable. I actually think that um, we have more senses than we know. You know, we talked in another show about how the sense of smell is actually fairly important. And there are sexual messages that are uh, clearly 
communicated through smell and through your sweat and through your glands. And there's no reason why there can't be more messages communicated that way, more uh, intentions that are um, noticed by women who tend to be more perceptive in particular and who may have a greater sense of smell and perception and feelings that we don't have and which is why they don't always recognize that why one guy, single guy is creepy and another single guy who's doing very similar things is not. It might have to do with a lot of cues and body language and reactions that uh, are not as obvious to, um, to them and to others. So I went around and I asked, and uh, we tried to put together a guide on the assumption that the majority of the guys who come across as creepy aren't really dangerous or don't mean to be creepy or don't want to be creepy and are more behaving in ways that they don't realize the impact. And so here's some of the answers that I've received. I always find it uncomfortable when people don't look at me in the eye. Um, when, you know, when sometimes when you first meet someone, they kind of look you over. But if we're having a conversation, I like to be looked at in the eyes. I don't like you to look at my breasts or anywhere else in my body. Um, it's, it makes me uncomfortable and it's disrespectful. And um, it's just, it's not a good sign that you're actually interested in talking to me. Now, I know from uh, talking further into this that just looking somebody over is, is normal. Uh, looking people up and down is a natural thing that we do when we meet somebody and when we're talking to them. That's why we notice if somebody's not wearing shoes in the office, we notice that. If we, uh, or the type of shoes they're wearing, we do look people up and down, and that's normal. But I'm always amazed when I talk to women that I hear that there's some men that stare at their chest while they're talking to them. And I've always wondered, do they realize that you can tell? I mean, you can see where somebody's looking. And, and my assumption is that a lot of men don't realize that you can see where their eyes are looking. Maybe because they themselves never notice where people are looking. I don't know. But let me tell you, that's a common complaint uh, that women have is that people are talking to their breasts and staring at their chests or nipples or whatever it is, as opposed to at their face or in their eyes. And, and that is disrespectful. It's disturbing. Um... And uh, if you guys think that they don't notice, you're, you're kidding yourself because they do. They may not tell you, but they definitely notice. So a quick look up and down is normal, but uh, really you need to avoid staring. You need to look at people in the eyes and talk to them as a person. Look, but don't stare. Everyone has parts. Of course, it's a little different to be seeing them in broad daylight, but you can take a quick glance, look away, don't stare. It makes everyone feel uncomfortable. Imagine if you're in a setting where everyone is staring at you, how uncomfortable you would feel. Don't do that to others. Try to be comfortable. Um, walk around and enjoy the view. Okay, and this one is obviously closely related to the first one, except this one is at a distance. And sure, when you're new to naturism, it's, uh, it's curious, it's interesting to see all the body parts and all the different body shapes and... But there's a difference between looking around and, and seeing people and staring. And yeah, we've had a few people. They come, they sit down, and they just find certain bodies more interesting and just focus on them. And you know, it doesn't matter if you're wearing sunglasses. People can still tell. They can sense it. And uh, nothing can make people more uncomfortable and get a, a complaint to the office faster than somebody who is really intently staring at them. Again, I, I think... Women in particular have a certain uh, sixth sense about the certain things like that. And they, they can feel somebody staring at you. And uh, it, it's a very, very good way to get branded as a creep very, very quickly. I would appreciate people respecting my space. And that means um, not touching me and um, backing off, not expecting hugs. Um, I'm not friends with everybody. I don't feel like hugging everybody and I don't enjoy any random person coming up and being like that with me. Here's another interesting difference because you see there's some single guys that get hugs all the time from women and, and it's normal. It's part of their relationships and others try to do the same thing and they get a big creep factor for doing it and uh, 
it has to do with how your relationship is with that person. I think some people see it done by certain people and assume that those women are willing to be giving hugs, and they do, but it's only to people they care for and and that they're comfortable with. Um, part of it has to do with uh, how comfortable they are with naturism, of course, because hugging while you're naked can feel very odd if you're new to it. But in general, it's also something that's reserved for closer friends. I mean, there is a cultural difference. Um, you know, I'm French Canadian and in, in the French Canadian culture and in the French culture in France as well. Uh, kissing uh, between men and women on the cheeks is a very accepted part even in uh, of greeting each other, even in a uh, business situation, but certainly not in an Anglophone situation. That's not normal. But it, you have to be particularly sensitive in a naturist environment that... Uh, there's some people that seem to be looking for hugs and that's like a cheap thrill. And again, that's a really quick way to get branded as a bit of a creepy guy. Um, and as well, you, you have to be aware of people's space. People ex have a certain requirement for space around them. That's also cultural, by the way. There, you, there are studies that were done that different cultures have different sort of private personal space borders around them. And, uh, but if you get too close, you know, you might remember the uh, Seinfeld episode with the close talker. That can make people feel uncomfortable. It can feel like somebody's intruding into their space. And if you're intruding in people's spaces, um, then their focus is no, no longer about what you're saying on you. Uh, it's about who you are and the fact you're in their space and the fact that you're making them feel creepy about it. So... Be very careful about people's personal space and be aware about how they react when you approach them. You know, if they're moving away slightly, respect that. Give them time, give them space. And certainly don't hug if you're getting any feelings that they're not comfortable with it or that's not the thing they want to do. Um, in fact, if you're not careful, um, hugging somebody when they don't want it could be seen as uh, harassment or sexual harassment or, uh, or worse. So... It's really something that's best to avoid unless you're sure that it's something that everybody's comfortable with. Don't make sexual jokes. Don't make comments about women's boobs, about how you really get a kick out of watching a gal walk past with her boobs bouncing, and you, there's nothing you like better than seeing a gal with her naked ass and this kind of thing, because um, that's not what we're here for, and that's not what it's about. Um, relax on the sexual stuff, because, well, honestly, that's not what we're here for. And... Why can't you just accept us as people? Why is it that a man should have to look at a woman constantly with the idea of sex in mind? I think this one comes from uh, a desire to be too casual, perhaps, or to be casual, to be personal. I mean, in a naturist environment, people are always commenting about how, you know, people feel they can let loose and be themselves. And that's true, but you still have to be aware that... Um, the respect for others includes not treating women as sex objects and uh, treating them, but treating them as people. And so, commenting on their bodies and what their breasts look like, or what their bodies look like, or or other women's bodies, <laughs> um, first of all, it goes right against in naturist uh, ethics and philosophy. And you know, if you're new to it, or if you spend most of your time in a textile world then clearly um, you may still be impacted by that and you may still be making those comments. You know, you can appreciate a woman as being attractive and uh, interesting without having to make comments that really objectify them. Again, that's another way to really make yourself seem like you're not there for the right reason and that brings in the creepy factor. And on a similar note, there's another form of oversharing that's really important to understand. The, the pornography thing really disgusts me. Um, I, I don't like it personally anyway. And if a guy brings it up, you know, that he watches porn or don't you ever watch porn or don't you ever get a real kick out of it, you know, I really like watching women that are naked. Well, but it's so degrading. It's so disrespectful. It's so, well, it's icky to put, to put it in a simple term. But it is, that is a guy who is looking at women to put them down. And that's, that's the really ugly part about porn. You know, a lot of porn makes men believe that women just need to be talked dirty to or that they're all looking for it, they're all interested in it, they just have to be given a chance. And, uh, of course, that's not true. That's not the real world. 
And in a nature's environment, if, if you talk about porn, then they're going to have the idea that you're there for the wrong reason. So it's really surprising, but I've run into that, that, you know, guys talk about some great porn to other women, not just in a nature's environment, but even in the textile world. I guess they think they are interested, and I guess they think that uh, the women they see in pornography is the way real women are, and they're not. I mean, that's a real disservice that the, the pornography industry is doing to make them think that there's all these women out there ready to just jump at the chance and get turned on by porn. And women, women are far more complex than that, and, and frankly, far more interesting. Um, so, you know, you might be interested in looking at uh, sexual imagery and uh, videos and movies with sexuality. There's nothing wrong with that. And again, there's a difference. There's a pornography that's done really more to be um, equal, where women are not degraded, where uh, you have a loving relationship in the sexuality. And I'm sure that women would be interested in that as much as men would be in the right situation. But it's not something to bring up in a casual conversation around a naturist environment, particularly if you don't know people well. And if you bring it up too much, you're going to seem a little obsessed, and that's a little worrisome as well. Again, that's a really great way to get yourself marked as creepy really fast. Yeah, don't be too attentive. I, I like to have, you know, face-to-face -face contact, and I like uh, people not to actually rape in my space or, you know, putting their hands on me or touching me a little bit too affectionately when they don't know me. Um, and, you know, very casual conversation. Nothing personal, uh, you know, the weather and, uh, you know, sky is blue and, you know, those are the kind of things that I would have a conversation with somebody that I really don't know. Um, I don't want them, you know, knowing where I'm going or what I'm doing or, you know, how I live. and. Again, that's a, a similar uh, issue to oversharing that can make somebody seem a little creepy. A little too much attention. A little too attentive, you know. Um, there's a, that's when you get almost into that borderline stalking behavior. You're trying to find out too much about them. You're getting too personal in discussion. Oversharing can be too attentive, but also asking too many questions or, or trying to be with that person a little too much that you don't know very well or seem seeming a little too friendly, um, that, that can be a little creepy. Again, that can really be um, a social awkwardness, uh, people who are not completely aware of how people react to certain things or don't have a complete sense of that. So it's something that uh, some people need to pay a little bit more attention to because it, it really gets them identified as creepy. And the attempt to be more social and to know more people therefore backfires and uh, they become a little ostracized by people who really feel uncomfortable with them. Okay, I think it's really important uh, for uh, males to have proper hygiene. It is kind of creepy for a female to come up and somebody to be nasty looking or even nasty smelling. And it's nice to be fresh and clean and, you know, use your towels and so forth. Okay, here, guys, it's, it's not about going out and getting all covered up in Axe body spray. I mean, that's, that's again, another disservice that society is doing to people and making them seem uh, uh, completely inadequate unless they buy a certain product. That's not what naturism is about. But just because we're not wearing clothes and just because we're trying to be more natural doesn't mean we shouldn't ever wash or comb our hair or get our hair cut and that kind of thing, you know. A certain amount of grooming, a certain amount of uh, keeping yourself neat is important, particularly for women. Women are more sensitive to that kind of thing than guys are. And uh, it should be relatively easy, actually, in a naturist environment because you shouldn't ever have clothes that need to be laundered. You just need to step in and out of the shower once in a while. It's just about meeting a certain basic level of cleanliness and hygiene, just showing you care. It doesn't mean you have to be have a perfectly clean shaven face. I mean, you can have a beard, you can have long hair, you can have short hair. Uh, doesn't mean you need to shave your whole body, although some, pe some people do that. I certainly don't, and we've talked about, another sh about that in another show. Um, it just means that you show that you care. Uh, you show that you will take care of yourself. And uh, when you don't, that, that, again, can seem a little creepy and make people uncomfortable about who you are. Don't gossip, because things get around and it gets all twisted. 
and nobody likes to be talked about. And you know, this one actually, this is one of the ones that applies as much to men as it does to women. And it's a, it's a sure way to get yourself into trouble to get people to not trust you. Because when you gossip about one person to another, then the people you're gossiping to wonder what you're saying about them when they're not around. It might seem like a good way to make friends because you have some interesting information that you can share with uh, others and therefore have something to talk about, and so that makes you seem in. But it's not just a naturist environment anywhere. That's a, a, a tremendous way to uh, hurt your reputation while upsetting others and hurting others. So I think those are all good pieces of advice to help people uh, not be creepy. As I said in the beginning, mostly men. It may not apply to you. It probably doesn't apply to most people listening to this show. But to a few people who have trouble getting into nature's clubs or have trouble getting along even outside of nature's clubs, some of these hints might help you. Um, or you might know somebody who has some trouble. And as a matter of fact, that's one of the reasons I'm going to be putting a uh, web page on the Baroque site about how to make friends. I'm not going to say how not to be creepy. That seems very negative. I titled this show that just a bit tongue in cheek because it uh, makes it a little bit more interesting perhaps. But it's really about how to make friends, how to get along with others, how to uh, be accepted. And uh, But at the end, it's about not being creepy, not having people be uncomfortable around you or not want you around. And there are some people out there that will be creepy because their intent is wrong. And you know, at the end of the day, you can't hide your intentions. You can uh, practice all you want, but especially in a nature's environment, your intentions become much more obvious. And people can see it by your body language, by your posture, by the way you look at them, by the way you communicate, by the things you say, perhaps by your body odor even. At the end of the day, if your intentions are not true to nature's values, you may have problems fitting in. But then there are some of you, well, let's say there are some people, I'm not going to say you who is the listener necessarily, I don't know, but there are some people clearly that have the best of intentions but still don't manage to communicate them because they have socially awkward habits that we've discussed here, which hopefully... This advice and the advice that I'll put on the website and I think maybe even the brochure that I will end up printing will help some people fit in the way a lot of single guys come to Bear Oaks and other nature's clubs and have no problems at all. The problem is not with being a single guy. The problem is there are some single guys and even some married men or men in a relationships that have trouble getting along and getting accepted and not coming across as creepy to the women in the park. Well, that's all once again for this episode of The Naturist Living Show. Thank you for listening. Um, I want to especially thank Peter Allison uh, for sending me the stingers that I use in the show. The stingers are those little bits of music that uh, are used to separate different elements of the show. He was kind enough to record a whole variety of them in a style that I was looking for that I'll be using and I used in this show and I'll be using in future episodes of the show as well. If you have any comments about this show, uh, the topic, if you want to add anything, if you just want to tell me whether you like or dislike something about the show, I always appreciate the feedback. Please send me an email. The address is naturistliving at bareoaks, that's B-A-R-E, of course, bareoaks.ca. Join us again in about a month for the next episode of The Naturist Living Show. This episode of The Naturist Living Show was brought to you by Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park. Traditional naturist values in a modern setting. Traditional values means that naturism is more than just taking your clothes off. It is a life philosophy with physical, psychological, environmental, social and moral benefits. Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park strives to promote those naturist values in a modern setting that provides the amenities and services that our members and visitors expect. Free your body, free your mind. 
Learn more at www.fairoaks.ca.